Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody tuning in today. Super T's here with another PvP guide, and in this one I'll be going over Restoration Druid, going over some of the new honor talents and strategies that I tried to implement here. I'm playing with Maldiva the Warlock and Zaryu on Shadow Priest. This composition felt quite potent. I think any combination of Shadow Priest, Warlock, or Death Knight, or Elemental Shaman with a Restoration Druid is going to be powerful. Those classes have a lot of burst, a lot of damage, pretty tanky, good self heals, and cooldowns that rotate well with the cooldowns that Restoration Druid has at its disposal. Here in this game, I am facing a Balanced Druid on Holy Death Knight, and I expect this to be a quite popular composition. So if you're a Restoration Druid playing on the ladder, this guide is definitely going to help you figure out where to place your heals, how to position, and how to trade cooldowns to be able to survive long enough to attrition the enemy team and actually take them down. In this specific scenario, I am running Cultivation, not Soul of the Forest and not Tree of Life. I have found Tree of Life not necessarily needed, Soul of the Forest is likely to be purged away, and Cultivation is just a nice middle ground. I am also running the Honor Talent, Mark of the Wild, because it reduces Nature and Arcane damage over time effects. The Balanced Druid's damage over time effects are close to 50% of the damage. I can reduce that by 15%, that's a pretty good deal. I am not running Cyclone in this composition, as we are a Dot Cleave, and we are looking to create spread pressure on multiple targets so there's no need for me to risk getting interrupted on cyclones that will do nothing but stop the target from taking damage which isn't the goal of our composition so playing against this you want to be playing very far away from the death knight keep hots up on your target and look to try and max range death grip as much as possible this way by staying out of range of the death grip the death thing will have to move towards you and as he walks towards you it becomes a lot more obvious that he wants to death grip you so in this position the death knight is walking his way over now i'm a little bit too close to the death knight he can very easily stun me so i opt to bash him and then reposition a little bit further away but you can see now he doesn't need to use the death grip he's just going to stun me for cod control the balance druid pops his incarnation i immediately go into bear form and use frenzied regeneration as the death knight wasn't attacking me there was no need to really bark skin. After I've survived the Star Surge Burst, I then use Iron Bark on the target being attacked by the two members. So the Death Knight is hitting the Shadow Priest, he's in range of the Shadow Priest, and the Balanced Druid is in his line of sight. This Iron Bark soaks up a few remaining seconds of the Incarnation Burst, but this Balanced Druid does a well-timed Cyclone at low health, and I need to start timing my heals right as it ends, so I line a regrowth up. Although Solar Beam is available, he can't do it while he's caught in a fear, which he was at this time. Unholy Death Knights have this new honor talent. You see the giant abomination. That does a lot of damage. You can see already it managed to force dispersion. So Incarnation, this abomination, uh, is going to trade cooldowns. You'll use Iron Bark or you'll use Dispersion. Or if in a worst case scenario, you'll use the Void Shift, which will redirect the health. Void Shift and Hellstone should be your last lines of defense, as you're likely to only be able to use them once, sometimes twice in Void Shift's case in a match, you, although you would want to rotate the Dispersion and Iron Bark as you'll have access to them. Here you can see this is another Death Grip Stun Swap, right when the Balanced Druid triggered his little mini incarnation. If you've watched my Moon King Guide for 8.1, you'll know what that is, and it's a pretty hard-hitting attack with that second Star Surge, so I immediately pop in Bear Farm and trade that Frenzied Regeneration, but I don't really want to use Bark Skin. There's no big threat from the Death Knight during that time, and that damage wasn't really warranting it. I would like to use my Bark Skin, like I said, during that Abomination, and during a stun lock where all three members are hitting me, maybe the Shaman is purging me. My main goal in this composition is to stay far away, try and manage my mana as efficiently as possible, keep my team as healthy as possible so that they can look to spread pressure and set up burst moments. So I'm just sitting at this corner so that I can line aside Cyclones, so I can line aside the Death Knight, so if he wants to do something like interrupt me or death grip me, it becomes a little bit more obvious. So this Balanced Druid moving into my line of sight, I try and LS him again on his Cyclones, and as he pushes forward, I might may tell my team, hey, we might have to switch targets the balance here to force him away because you don't want him standing on your face here i'm too close to the death knight he was able to death grip me while he did not need to move and because he didn't need to move it wasn't obvious and i couldn't preemptively go into bear form but again every asphyxiate my first response is bear form frenzied regeneration i will only use the bark skin if it's the incarnation or if it's a lot of damage from three members if i feel myself getting purged and bursted down and i'm running some ursoc endurance so every time my bark skin i'll get a little bit of a shield so 
so you can afford to be greedy with the bark skin. Here I find a position out of line of sight of the member's interrupts and I can fully channel a tranquility and the main benefit of the tranquility is that it gives you an extra heal over time effect which scales up your mastery healing which is just all of your healing in general will be higher. Now that I'm a little bit out of position, I decide to use Iron Bar because it's only a 45 second CD and I need to start saving mana. I'm losing heavily on mana against this Restoration Shaman, so it may be wise for me to start using the Iron Barks here as we move deeper into Dampening. I also may start to have to look to find a drink, but if I move to drink, then my teammates will have to use personal defensives. You only want to go for a drink if your Shadow Priest has Dispersion, your Warlock is a Portal or an Unending Resolve. In this position, they both do. So if I wanted to move for a drink, it would be a wise decision. I get Death Crypt into a stun, mini incarnation from the Moonkin, as it's basically three members hitting me and I don't have hots, I decide to use Barkskin in that moment at the balance, and it's also the abomination of the Death Knight, so that Barkskin trades for a lot of overcommitment by the enemy team, but then they switch to my Shadow Priest, and like I said, that Dispersion is likely to be traded with this abomination from the Unholy Death Knight, but Incarnation, which is tracked improperly on Omnibar, is about to be available for the balanced druid. So we don't have dispersion, we don't have bark skin. So my only defensive cooldown really that I can rotate with is my iron bark. And I have to be really careful about who I dedicate it to. And I need to be in a good position to avoid damage on this incarnation because if they switch targets, let's say they burst down the Shadow Priest and then switch to me, I could be in danger. During that moment, because my mana wasn't looking too good, I decided to use Iron Bark on the Shadow Priest, which now leaves me up to a very devastating point in the game where incarnation will be available and I'm not going to have a lot to work with. So it might be our time to use last resort cooldown, something like the Hellstone, Renewal, or the Void Shift. So I get Death Crypt into a stun, the Balanced Druid pops his Incarnation, and I decide to Trinket. As I said, this is when I'm going to have to use bigger cooldowns than the Iron Bark and Bark Skin, because I don't have the Iron Bark or Bark Skin. I immediately duck out of line of sight and retreat back to the Mushroom that I preemptively placed up here to escape to. Then I go back to healing my Shadow Priest, which I left Life Bloom on, and I tell him to use the Gateway. So these are other big cooldowns outside of the rotation of the Dispersion, outside of the rotation of the Iron Bark. You can use Gateway to escape, and because the Death Knight used Death Grip on me, he can't Death Grip the Shadow Priest back down. And now we can really exploit the map. The Mugambala is the best map for Warlocks, period, hands down. This gateway, my Warlock just gates up to safety. He can put a portal up here. We can use Life Grip to get up here. As a Wizard Cleave, if you see Mugambala, you definitely want to abuse this type of positioning. They Death Grip the Shadow Priest down, which is a smart move. He can't use a portal to get right back up, but they've left my Warlock up top free casting, and he's starting to do a lot of damage. So I drop an Ursul's Vortex onto the Death Knight and Moonkin to hold him in line of sight so my Warlock can continue raining down from above without having to compromise his positioning, at least until his portal is available. Once this portal is available, you really want to get your Warlock back into the fight, and then you can use the portal to get back to safety at any time. So now in this position, we should have Dispersion coming off cooldown very soon. We have Unending Resolve available for the Warlock, and it may be wise to start looking for a drink in this specific matchup. My mana has started to even out. I get Death Crypt into a stun, but I don't see a mini incarnation, and I don't see any purges, so I opt to not use Bark Skin so that when the next time 68 comes up, I will have it available should that little mini incarnation window happen or a purge happen, and I really want to save it for when all three members kind of commit on me. Otherwise, it's a bit of a bait to try and get my Bark Skin. The bad trade-off is that it cost me a lot of mana to not trade Bark Skin during those stuns, so I have to be a little bit careful of that. And I'm spreading out my Swift Men's, so I'll Swift Men one target that doesn't have Life Bloom, and then leave Life Bloom on the other target. If you Swift Men the target with Life Bloom, it gives you a lot of single target, but your spread healing will be lower and it'll cost you more mana if you have to regrowth pump someone. So I spread my Life Bloom unless I absolutely need to. So in this position, it would have been nice to have a Swift Men because we're moving into dampening, healing is becoming difficult, and because of this crowd control chain with Abomination activated here, standing in front of me, we had to use our very powerful cooldown Void Shift to recover, and then they switched targets to Warlock. So you can see I'm in a really stressful situation with multiple targets really low health. So your first priority is to get Life Bloom up, then your next global should be Swift Men, unless the target's about to die. You could have used Swift Men as the first global there, but I wanted to get some extra healing for my mastery with having Life Bloom, and Life Bloom is generally an immediate heal, and if they purge, then they will purge the Life Bloom and heal the target for a lot. So when you've got no hots on a target generally speaking life bloom is your first then they switch while i tried to get a tranquility onto multiple members of the team and in that position i felt like the warlock could go down so i used swift mend as my first heal and then tell him to use unending resolve which we end up overlapping here with iron bark and when you move into dampening 
your cooldowns start to cycle much more improperly and this team is setting up a lot better crowd control chains as well with the dampening effect and these better crowd control chains they're forcing out high pressure situations where you're going to make mistakes you don't typically want to overlap that on any resolve the red cooldown from the warlock with your iron bark but in that position i really felt like we could easily just go down if i didn't but now I've got a 24 second window where I don't have a lot to work with. So now we need to start communicating when are you gonna use the portal? When are you gonna use the gateway to get to safety? Because the next big attack from them is going to be soon. Fortunately, mana is fairly even as both the Shaman and I are tapped. We've been battling it out for the better part of seven minutes at this point. So it's gonna become pretty dicey. I've got Innervates, they're focusing single target. So I sift in the same person that has life plan. I then move in for a bash for my team to burst off of. It's basically a race to the finish at this point for either team to win. I try to get an Innervate set up. I get Death Gripped in and I'm getting Star Surged. So I decide to trade Bark Skin here as I do not want to fall too far behind. If I fall behind with no mana, then I will not be able to recover. Now they activate Incarnation and they dump a couple Star Surges, but incorrectly into my Bark Skin, which should allow me to recover. So there's Incarnation, there's Abomination. It's time to run. It's time to get out of Dodge. My Warlock portals away. My Shadow Priest starts running out of line of sight and we need to kite. And in this position, if they overextend and chase us they're going to take a lot of damage line of sighting their shaman so they're a bit slow to push in and progress for it but i tell my shadow priest to trade dispersion why dispersion before iron bark you may ask well i may need iron bark for myself or my warlock because we don't have personal cooldowns so it's better for the player to use personal cooldowns in that situation if the other two members don't have them and then i'm desperately then i chain it into an iron bark to allow my shadow priest to be durable enough to kind of force the other team away with them committing damage into a target that has defensive cooldowns their moment momentum is much lower and then because I'm completely out of mana I decided it's just better to wrath people it costs no mana so I can pump out just an added bit a little damage maybe counter a death strike or force another powerful cooldown unfortunately they get another little mini incarnation window here so my shadow priest line of sights with the upper part pillar here which is smart and ducks around the corner using the greater fey doing immune incoming pressure they switch some damage to me and i use bark skin renewal now bark skin here was not needed at all this was an overreaction to how high dampening was and the fact that i had no mana remaining bark skin should generally only be used if two targets are hitting you and you're likely in a stun the renewal was more than enough for me to survive there now you can see one thing is i should be refreshing mark of the wild more as it would alleviate a lot of this spread damage that is currently happening to my team by reducing the dots of the balance druid i use bark skin on my shadow priest who jumped into the fight but now you can see the momentum is starting to swing more in their favor i managed to fake cast a uh, mind freeze there by the death knight my warlock sets up a well channeled inevitable demise drain life so while he's bursting down i decide to dash in and look for a bash on the shaman immediately realize that I've overextended for that crowd control my next global cooldown is bear form and then I start to run away around the corner so I don't have a lot of mana to work with I need to use spells that are free frenzy regeneration doesn't cost mana so I use that then I immediately start getting the rejuvenations onto multiple targets it would have been more wise to use life bloom as the first global cooldown there that was a bit inefficient on my part and then I use Swiftmen, and you can see I spread the Swiftmen out. I've got Life Bloom on Shadow Priest, Swiftmen on Warlock. This is because they're hitting both targets equally, and I want both targets to heal back up equally. If I overcommit to one, then the other one will suffer, and that will result in needing to use Regrowth too much, and I can't really Regrowth when I'm out of mana. Now, this mana situation could have been solved by me looking for drinks earlier on, especially when my partners had Dispersion and Unending Resolve, and it may have been smart to trade those for a drink because then we could have played aggressively on top of the other team. Instead, we're kind of just fiddling around and slowly rotting them and we get a lot of momentum here so i use ursula's vortex to hold all three members at the top stacked up in line of sight of each other for my casters to start attacking and i don't have any mana anymore it's just time to go bear and jump on the other team thrash and do as much damage as i can these abilities in bear form don't cost any mana so i can use frenzied regeneration to soak all the damage i'm really trying to make myself the target here because i can just heal through it with the frenzied regeneration and when they're all stacked i can get thrash on everybody and really start tearing in but this isn't something you generally want to do until the game is really about to end and you don't have a lot of options otherwise you're just putting yourself in the middle of danger for no reason anyway I hope that this guide was of some use to you. I've been enjoying Resto Druid a lot in patch 8.1, at least a lot more than the last patch, and I definitely suggest that you check it out. So please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel here and hitting that notification bell as I'm making videos every single day. And if you want to know when those videos go live, then that's one way to do it. Thank you for tuning into the video, and I'll see you on the next one.